What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tristan Tanner, part of Team Latitude 64, and today I'm gonna show you how to improve your forehand. Okay, first off, I'm just gonna show you guys uh, what my forehand looks like, and then I'm just gonna kind of break it down into the key points that I think you should think about in your throw. Um, so here, first off, is just kind of an angle from straight behind. Take a look at this. Nice and smooth, keeping really good balance there. Um, and then here's a, a look just straight from the side. Again, see the balance on that one. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start from the side point of view and kind of break this down for you guys um, and show you how this works. So, first off, starting position is gonna be, um, notice how my wrist is fully loaded back. Um, so what I mean by that is um, this is a really open wrist. Um, this is more of a closed off wrist. Um, so on the forehand, we really wanna have it really open um, to start the throw, as well as you can see here on the video, relative to my elbow, my wrist is in front of my elbow, um, like pointed towards my target. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this slingshot whip effect. So just like you've heard many times on the backhand where you don't really wanna leave it back um, and then get it through, um, you want it to have that kind of snappiness motion where it's moving back and then forward. We want the same thing on the forehand and to create that, it's really keeping that wrist in front of the elbow, then taking the elbow off when you then drive forward, the disc is gonna lag behind, um, then resulting in more spin and more speed. So let's take a look at that in my throw. Notice wrist forward all the way, um, barely there. It's at the same plane as the elbow, um, which is fine. Um, and then see there's that slingshot effect. I drive my whole body forward, elbow comes way in front, as you can see right there. The disc is super lagged behind. That's where all the spin and power comes from on my throw. Um, and then it snaps forward right there at the end of the throw. Um, we're gonna take a look at this from the behind view. Um, again, you can see wrist forward in front of the elbow. Um, and what I want you to take a look at here is the plane in which I'm pulling the disc back on um, relative to my target line. Um, so my target line is right there. Um, notice how the disc goes straight back off of that line and then straight through. Um, this is just gonna result in a cleaner release um, and less inconsistency pulling it left and right, um, as well as adding a little bit of angle control. Um, so on your throw, uh, it's gonna feel like you're reaching really far out away from your body, because a lot of people have the tendency to reach around as opposed to kind of outward. Um, so definitely take that into account, um, really important in the throw. Next, I'm gonna take a look at my feet. We're gonna move back to the side angle. Um, so I go really slow on my forehand, and that's because um, it's really more about being deliberate in loading your weight back on your right foot um, and then letting all that transfer into your left. Um, and all of these things with the footwork are gonna be switched um, if you're a lefty, um, apologize for that. Um, but really slow on the footwork, and two, the farther I'm trying to throw, the actually slower I go with my steps, because I really wanna to try to load that weight back on my right and really let it transfer to the left. So let's take a look at this. So see really slow, really slow, and here all my weight is on that right foot loaded. See I'm in, in, in an athletic stance. This is gonna really help me drive that weight forward. Um, but all the weight's loaded on the right foot here. And then um, a nice stomp with that left foot. See I'm really low and now all that weight has from this point to this point, all that weight is driven from my back right foot um, all the way up onto that left foot, um, giving me that huge weight transfer, and that's where a majority of my power comes from. Um, on my forehand, this is something that um, I really control. If I'm trying to throw really far, I load more weight on the back foot and really try to stomp on that left, 
and if I'm trying to throw a really short shot, I'll keep my weight a lot farther forward um, just to take some more variables out of it. Um, again, let's take another look here. Um, all the weight's transferred. And then two, at the end of the throw, notice my balance. Um, so balance is super important all through the game of disc golf, especially when we're throwing more powerful shots with the forehand and backhand, but it applies to everything. Um, so with the forehand, we want everything to then stop on the left foot and you should be able to balance solely on that left foot at the end of the throw, just like you can see with mine. That means all the weight is effectively transferred into the disc and you're not leaving energy left over um, with falling forward, falling to the side, falling back. Um, all of that energy is going into the disc. Um, one more key point that I'd like to point out um, is just kind of more of a feel thing. Um, and that is the wrist motion um, and the snap of the wrist. Um, a common misconception is people want to snap their wrist really late. Um, and what that ends up happening um, or ends up creating is a tendency to roll your wrist over um, or kind of add some off axis torque at the end of the throw. So when I'm thinking about my forehand, I, at the very peak of my reach back, that's where the snap of the, the hand goes forward. So the first thing I'm thinking um, and have adapted to thinking is the snap of the hand. Um, and that's gonna just help time everything up. Um, as soon as you think you're snapping later, you're gonna be snapping too late after the disc is right leaving your hand. So really think about snapping that wrist early and then just kind of guiding um, and continuing all that energy towards your target line. Um, one more key point actually, this has to do with the grip. Um, I think the grip is way overlooked. Um, I personally do a kind of two finger stacked grip here, um, but it really doesn't matter. This concept um, works no matter what. Um, if you're doing the power grip, um, kind of the, the Sexton, uh, Paul Macbeth kind of grip, um, but I do this two finger stacked grip and I tell people on the forehand throw, you only have three fingers, okay? So you have your thumb, you have these two fingers, they could be taped together, they should not at any point leave each other, and then you have these two fingers that also don't leave each other at all. Um, so these two fingers stacked slightly bent in towards the rim is how I like to do it, but all the way through the follow through of the throw, those fingers are still together. I only have these three fingers these are glued, these are glued. Um, that'll uh, prevent what I call a finger roll. Um, so a lot of people talk about the wrist roll on the forehand, um, and most people who have wrist rolling issues actually are just separating these two fingers. And so the same as, if this is the plane of my throw, when I turn my palm over, that rolls the disc over. The same thing happens if I separate these two fingers. Here, you get this slight little bit of, of kind of roll over motion. Um, so really just think about keeping three fingers in your forehand throw. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's my overview of how I throw forehands and a couple tips um, to better your forehand game. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. I do a lot of cool challenge videos on and off the course as well as I'm going to be starting to mix in hopefully a couple more tip videos. Um, if you haven't checked me out on Instagram, um, it'll be right up here somewhere. Um, and yeah, check out my last video, subscribe, see you guys in the next video.